or we have just offline activities of our community, like the biology group, going out, having a camp on a weekend, and we just make a, a nice, interesting video out of it. It doesn't have so much information, it's more like, ah, it's nice to watch, nice to see what they have done, and that, that they are active, and so on. Things like that. Then we have uh, contemporary witnesses. Uh, we've done this at least once in Germany, that we had some older guy, journalist, who happened to work in the state government as a journalist for so many years, knowing all the, the prime ministers in that state, and we were talking to them, Olaf is over there, he was organizing this and doing the interview, so he was really talking to this guy for one and a half hours about every single prime minister we had in that state, and that guy just gave amazing uh, background information and so on. So, and now we, we are having like this little big interview and we have these little pieces about the, each prime ministers which we can put on the Wikipedia articles and give, add some extra information. Is that kind of original reason? I don't know, I would consider this guy to be a source. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is maybe a discussion that will, uh, will be a, a result of us doing more video. Andrew yesterday presented about how, much, how many videos we have in English Wikipedia. We have actually like 4,000 videos, which is uh, less than 1% of the articles having videos. And uh, I remember, I'm a Wikipedian since 2004, when we discussed at some point that we need more pictures. My personal opinion is that today we have a lot of very good photographers. They are taking a lot of pictures. I think we have really we have a lot, lot, lot of pictures. We still have some uh, white areas, <laughs> white spots in Wikipedia, but uh, I wouldn't consider this as a problem. I, I I don't think like we need more photographers or something like that. It's, it's always good to have, but. It's nothing that we have to take care about or, or like actively find. But with video, this is, I guess, the next step to do. And what Andrew showed yesterday, it's, it's quite interesting because he's a professor in journalism. I'm the tech guy. I'm just interested in like, yeah, I like this doing the videos because I like the technology things. I struggle with, okay, and now I have all this video footage, how do I make an interesting looking video out of it? And this is where Andrew comes in, and that's what he was talking yesterday about. Uh, visual literacy, he, saw, he told us, it's very easy to, to watch a video, but it's very hard to make it. With the, with the photo, it's different. It's, it's still harder to make it than to look at it, but I, I think it's, the gap is not that big. But making a good video takes a lot more effort. And um, yeah, but now I have to bring that back together <laughs> to, to keep on track a bit. Uh, yeah, so we have these, um, we have the stuff we want to put into the Wikipedia articles, like as sources, references. We have this other offline stuff we do for ourselves within the community. And uh, the interview things to get information in from other people uh, that can be both. For instance, last year we had the chapter selected for the seats. Somebody remembers that? Um, so if you're active in a chapter, ah, Winter, great, you're coming. Because I was just saying, yeah, uh, who, who, who is into video here and nobody raised his hand and said, oh, that's a pity because it was meant to be like a workshop. Let's talk about video together, not meet talking about something and the rest of um, just listening. Sure, I'll, I'll say whatever you want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. I tried to, to find the, the, the connection to Andrew's talk yesterday. Have you been to Andrew's talk? I uh, know, but I've heard Andrew talk about video several times. It was, it was really good. And we have quite a different perspective because he's a journalist, I'm the tech guy. I like filling with the camera and he knows what you actually, what shots you have to make and how to combine them together to get something which looks good. 
And I was just talking about what Wiki TV for me means, and I, I have realized that it's a bad name, actually, because I'm not talking about TV, not about broadcast or the news or something, but like interviews, contemporary witnesses, documenting Wikimedia internal activities, uh, doing the interviews. One example was that the chapters can select two board members of the board of trustees of the Wikimedia Foundation. And we had that situation last year. And we had, I think, six or eight candidates. And I sent them uh, um, a request, please send me a one minute video taken with your cell phone, whatever, and for two or three of them, I did it, because I met them physically, and they said, oh, I don't know how to do it. So in the end, I think we had, from all of them, or from all except one, I'm not sure, we had video, short videos introducing themselves from all of them, and then with a few, unfortunately, we are, we don't have enough resources, I mean, in enough people um, who are into this helping. Uh, we started um, transcribing the videos, so we had the text, could make subtitles, and then translate the subtitles. Um, so Things like that. So perhaps um, if, you, if, if the, the goal is to make this more of a workshop, maybe just having everybody introduce themselves, because I, like, I don't know, uh, I know Victor, but like, I don't know many people here. So. So I, I can start. I'm uh, Rob Lamp here. I work for the foundation uh, managing, uh, among other things, the, the new multimedia team that we're uh, um, in the process of hiring. So I guess from that perspective, I am working on uh, video stuff, but it's uh, very early days. So. We don't need you, because I've got a project proposal <laughs> in like two slides or so. I, I just have like eight slides. Then. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm Daniel Case. I'm uh, from Sometimes involved with you. What? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw your face so many times. And uh, four, four years ago in Berlin. Bring together an yes. 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 And uh, I'm sometimes involved with Wikimedia New York City. And I, last year after Wikimedia, I decided to start making some videos for articles myself. So, and I thought, I've done a few. And they are in said articles. So I'm in that way involved with video. Very good. We need more people like you, exactly. Um, I'm Leslie. Um, I've been um, anything on English Wikipedia for like um, six years, but um, well, I'm not very familiar with video, but I'm interested in maybe incorporating more videos into articles. Mm -hmm. Since right now it's just about text and pictures is kind of boring, so having videos to make it more eye-friendly and more in a way more interactive. So that's why I'm here, just so we guys have to talk about. Thank you. Do you want to go to back row? Do you want to say something? You? Donald? Olaf? Hmm? Ich hab's dir bei Ihnen ganz zu sein. Kurze Vorstellungsstunde. Achso, okay. Ja? In Englisch? In Englisch? Yeah, please. Uh, please. My name is Olaf Kosinski. I come from Germany. And uh, in the German Wikipedia, um, I'm the uh, organizator, uh, project manager of the uh, project Wikipedia in Parliament. Uh, we go in the German uh, state parliaments uh, and photograph and uh, interview the, the members of the parliament or the, the government uh, uh, to make photos uh, from this, from parliament. From the, because uh, before we are going in the parliament, um, probably 90%, 90% of the members, they have no photos. Um, after the project, 90% uh, have a photo, a good photo, uh, nearly 100%. And uh, the last time, uh, uh, we are not making a lot of photos, uh, we are making videos. We invite the members, it uh, was a good idea in Sven, they made it. Um, and we invite uh, the members and nearly 50% um, made a small um, statement, 20 seconds, one minute, two minutes, and a camera, and uh, it, it's, it's very good um, uh, against them. Extension. Extension uh, to the article, to the photo, uh, to the 
very good photo. Uh, it's a very good extension when you see, uh, not not with makeup, only to to talk about uh, the, the the old person. Yeah? And this is uh, my job. Okay, job the guy you just came in. A short a short introduction. Who you are? What you do in the video? Well, actually, I'm just volunteering for tech support, but I'm doing the job. Ah, you brought a, a working VGA cable? No, no, I was trying to find the tech support people. <laughs> Are you <laughs> trying to find them? Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. What is, <laughs> it, what is it if you're trying to plug in? Are you just, do you, do you need just the mini video connector? Uh, the, 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 the cable seems to be broken because there is a pin missing. Oh, okay. I tried it, it didn't work. I okay. thought maybe it works with a distorted image or with some color missing. Is, there, is there power to the computer? To the computer? I mean the desktop computer. The desktop computer. I, I've not been using that. It seems like the power is not working at all. But the, 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 the projector worked. But I just got like no source. Uh, sorry, the guy with the cool... Uh... <laughs> it's, it's Victor's actually. Uh, my name's Sean Matthews and uh, Victor and I actually made a bit, what was that? In Jan January? Uh, February, it was, yeah, yeah, it was right before uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, so we did a fun, it was called Love Dart, the weirdest Valentine's video ever, so. Yeah, we made a video for fundraising uh, before about uh, we wanted to make a happy Valentine's Day from Wikipedia, and so we found a, an article uh, about uh, that's when snails mate, yeah. they stab each other with these things called love darts. Oh, They're that arrows like that, that they yeah. shoot into each other. And we found some editors who uh, wrote this article. Unfortunately, only one editor responded. Uh, she was in New York City, so we went to New in York Brazil? City yes. and uh, interviewed her about it. She Totally eloquent, yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. So uh, I'm a independent video producer and content producer um, from the United States. So that's my background and kind of developing short branded videos for companies and you know telling stories through various things. So I, we were talking about it, it's like this is an awesome, awesome class. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, I have been a Wikipedia editor since 2005. I, we saw this title. I work for the foundation in the fundraising department, and I produce a lot of content about the community and about Wikipedia for the general public. Uh, but we saw this class, and when I was uh, a poor student and an editor of Wikipedia, I thought it was just awesome that I could take a, a photo of something on my 2G cell phone, email it to myself, and then upload it, and it's like, wow. Some of these photos I've taken that are real grainy, they illustrate the articles today because no one else has come by to, to take these things. So I, I still think that uh, there's no such thing as a, uh, I think the allure of photography and that this mystique around the photographer and what's a professional photographer or not, that should be torn away because if you're illustrating something, uh, a photo is better than no photo. Best and camera is the one that you have. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alexander. Well, um, before you came from today, I came from Russia. And I am here to bring some uh, your experience to my friends in Russia with me, in Russia with me. So, yeah, uh, I can for comments and for how to so I happily count you in when we go start the big wiki video international project. <laughs> Hopefully. Serbia and Serbia. 
Um, I'm, I've made a few, you know, amateur videos in my life, but I don't just consider myself a video um, anything. Uh, I look more like taking photos. Um, but I'm interested in the general idea of, of making videos, and well, I'm here to learn something or see something. Uh, Josh from Chicago. Uh, but I worked with this Chinese artist Leo Wei, who did a video installation here in Hong Kong. Just here to see how, because it, it was, you know, these user videos that you just edited himself with you no know, video background, and how we can get more you know, realistic videos that everyday users can make and apply that into our Yeah. Who of you have been to Andrew's ladies session yesterday? Because I think this is, it was awesome. Because, I mean, he was talking about, I mean, I, we, we are really uh, like extending each other because he was really talking like how you can do with your cell phone or whatever the, the five easy steps to take a, a video that looks like yeah, I, I that, that, that looks true. usable and uh, not about the, 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 the technical quality like the number of pixels, whatever, the but, frame rate. <laughs> but oh, the frame rate, or or frame rate is, but it videos. tells the story, and that that's what what it's needed. Everything else we can improve later. And um, me being the tech guy, I, I was like, I oh, I, we need videos. We really should do this, and it's an interesting thing, and I know how to do this technically. But actually, I didn't know about this like these five shot method or anything. That was exactly the challenge I often have, like. Oh, now I have this fancy video set up, so, and now we are doing this this footage, getting this footage in, so what are we going to do with it? I mean, how can we make it something that looks nice and not just boring? I mean, I could put a camera over there, record the whole session, and then upload uh, one and a half hour interesting sessions, but people will stop looking at it after five minutes. Because two minutes. Ten, or <laughs> or ten, two minutes. ten seconds. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to insert. <laughs> 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 yes. And I mean, this is, I, I started with that way as well, and I mean, I would say maybe back in those days when, when I also did exactly the same, it was maybe better than not having it, but yeah. So we have these different uh, challenges. And I tried to put this together. What we tried in the German community with support by the chapters was that getting some nice equipment. I mean, first of all, we had the pilot things, very small things where I just did it because there was a conference. And uh, a few days before, we just like, rented the two cameras and a mixer. And, and got our first experiences. And then we knew, okay, we need this kind of equipment and this kind of setup works to get interesting videos, at least from uh, documenting sessions and workshops. And then we started buying a few things, getting some money so we had like, could offer travel support. So we could tell people, okay, let's go. We need three people going to a certain event. Uh, and we have some money so we can buy you the train ticket and, uh, and uh, an accommodation for one night to go there and do that. And um, so right now I have like three one terabyte USB disks with me, having one and a half terabyte of uh, raw material of 90 hours approximately. So what I'm going to do, there are already maybe 50 videos on comments, but that was hard work. And the majority of the stuff is still my USB disks. I mean, we could do way more. And just the, the video we did with that, with this journalist I talked about earlier, which would have organized this one and a half hour video. I, I already spent several days in editing and doing the stuff and still not yet ready. And we did this in March. And so <clears throat> now we tried something new, or we, we, we took it to the next step. OK, let's do some, provide some training. We had recently had in Candlelight training in Berlin. 
And it was very interesting because there were several people who were not from our community who came to this workshop. We did it in a hacker space in Berlin. And almost half of the people who came there were not Wikipedians or so. So, of course, we don't know yet, but maybe it's an opportunity to get new people into this, into the Wikimedia world. Maybe by just taking videos. And uh, of course, we were happy because as the organizers, having uh, a few more people attending the workshop, we had the costs anyway. So they didn't cost us any money. They were from Berlin or so. They just showed up because they heard about it through the hackerspace and through friends and so on. So we are, of course, happy that our money was used actually more effectively, even if those people maybe will never make videos for us, but maybe, I mean, they learned how to use an open source video editing tool. And that's good. I mean, I try to focus on the open source thing. There is Canon Life, which I have just named. Uh, maybe I should write it down because the name is a bit strange. It's for KDE, that's where it came from, Canon Life. And there is a fork now, which is not as powerful as Canon Life yet, but platform independent, which is called OpenShot. I haven't worked yet with OpenShot because on my Linux distribution this is still a beta and I I simply didn't want to install all those beta packages yet, but as soon as it is available as a stable package I will try to use it. Um, so this is these are kind of the forms. Um, just as a simple picture, what we have done, if you have a static setup, I mean you have someone explaining something, or a video, or you have a workshop you want to uh, record. In, in these settings, what we have currently done, and what for me proves to work very well, is that uh, you have your, your person or your object, or maybe two persons talking to each other, and you have like two cameras. I have this here, but... Uh, and then you just connect everything to a video mixer. Maybe you even have like a presentation going on. So you take uh, from 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 that uh, projector here. You, you also take the, the, the video signal to a mixer. And then from the mixer, you mix it live. And then you record it directly. This is. This is, in many cases, seems to be like a quite simple setup because uh, it prevents you from having this huge bunch of footage where you never find the time to actually edit. Uh, I, guess my, I I'd like to add something because I, I think that's a really good setup. But if for an average Wikipedian, I don't think they're going to have that kind of equipment around. <laughs> and this is what we did in Germany by having this project. So we have. A, that equipment and can use it at least throughout Europe. Okay, that's but sending I'm, it around. I, I, I guess what I'm getting at is to try to think about like uh, someone who could be anywhere who might just have like a smartphone, you know, or some something like that. Yeah. What could what um, to try to if they wanted to do like a two camera setup? I guess is what I'm trying to think of. Uh, that you could do things that are even more kind of, it's not really low tech, but more like accessible. So that you could have like, I could have this phone and you could have you know, your phone and we could figure out some way to put them on like a $5 tripod and then still have good audio yeah. for things. So that then it could be like for, you know, a, a very inexpensively, you could uh, put the material together that way. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking a lot. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what the, 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 po the point here is uh, from starting working with individual cameras into going, okay, let's, let's have a mixer and do this live. Because this saved a lot of time, but this is a more, a, yeah, you need more equipment and not everyone has access to like a mixer. Camera is often easier. What, um, 
there is there is something in between. You can use a cheap uh, camcorder which has a firewire output, or also called a digital media DV, because you can just plug it into your computer. If it runs Linux, even better, because you plug it in can grab the video stream live with just open source tools. Just write it down to your upright. By FireWire, you mean that? I mean, I, I haven't seen a computer with a 1394 port in a while. It's like this? Well, I can't tell you. Most of the computers have that. I think they well, I, just, I remember when they were dedicated 1394 At least port. notebooks have it, often have it. Uh, desktop computers, you're right. It's not so often, but I think notebook computers, most of them have the this small, the, the small one. The small one with a little, it looks like a gothic art window with a little. Yeah. It's like. Okay, this. that looks different from what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, also called, yeah, 1394. 94. It has too many uh, things. But yeah, with, with, with Firewire, there's also like a, a Linux software called DB Switch, where you can have like. Two cameras, two notebooks, running DB switch on it, sending it to maybe a third computer via a wired network, also running DB switch, and then you get in all the video sources, and there you can do some AB live editing and writing it back to the hard disk. That's pretty cool, and especially these cameras are much cheaper than like uh, here I was working with like SDI because you run, can run a hundred meter cable, just plug it in, works, and you have HD and great quality. But obviously this is not always uh, possible. What, what's the name again of this software, please? Uh, the 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 one for the Debian DB switch. Yeah, I'm writing the on the DB switch. The Debian guys uh, seem to have developed this because they need this for their conferences. Great. So, and I know at least one person trying to do this with a Raspberry Pi. These little computers you can put together by your own. You can buy these little boards called shields. So you have like the just the main CPU and then you might have like a FireWire shield. Put them together, install some mini Linux on it which just runs the DB switch and has an Ethernet connection through So you could like have the camera with this Raspberry Pi on it and then you just run a network cable and then at some point you bring in all the video streams from the different cameras and do the editing and set, uh, recording. Uh, just to kind of play off of both of what you guys were saying, I've, I've used a smartphone app that will tie a couple of cameras together to do exactly like what you're talking about. So it kind of bridges both of those worlds where it's like um, kind of real time. You're getting the footage from, and I've seen, I, there's an app that does I think up to like eight. So we could be, have eight people in the room shooting this and some, but one person is in charge of switching the footage. So if we're doing like a presentation, you can get um, and it's still clunky, but it's it's pretty it's pretty cool, um, and it certainly solves that pro that idea of being accessible, but still having some uh, you know a, a slightly more professional element to it. I guess. What is the name? It, I, I can't it's remember the name of the app. Maybe. What's that? Live stream. Well, there's there's a couple of if you if you Google it, there's like it's just like iPhone switching, you know, video switching app or whatever. I can't remember I, the name. Of it. I used it to use live stream mm -hmm. targets, and they had this Android app, iPhone app, and I could use it on my desktop also. Yeah. But the problem was, all the devices had to be connected to the internet. They have to be on the, the same. The signal would be going to the live stream server, and then I had to mix that on the server. So, if one camera has a better connection than the other camera, then the mix is going to have problems. Yeah. And also, live stream is not free software, and now they are charging you to use it. So they have this problem, like, I don't know if the US, you would have this problem, but in Brazil, we really have this connection problem. So I would better use something that is my local network and just the mixer going out and not everybody going out, then back to yeah. mixer and out again. So the, the app that I know has this architecture that for places that don't have this great connection wouldn't work very well. Yeah. 
So, unfortunately, we are running out of time because the workshops are always too short. And uh, I, I would have loved to do this more extensively because this uh, technical uh, exchange of experience is quite interesting. Maybe I let me get to another point and then wrap up as soon as possible so we may might have some more minutes to keep to go on discussing. The challenges I have identified so far for from the um, experiences we get was first of all finding people interested in doing actually video. I mean in the German Wikipedia we have set up this project called it Wiki TV, being it a good name or not and have a mailing list and advertise it and have a wiki page and do this as a project and get some support from the chapter and so on. And there were actually several people signing up on the mailing list and saying this is a great project, but so far I, it, the, the first people who were not me editing video footage, I met at this video editing workshop. Maybe this will improve, but this was really a problem. So for more than a year, we had like people coming in saying, this is great, but there was nobody actually doing something. Uh, so training people to produce good videos, both technically and what Andrew does, like yeah, giving them these like, interesting five shot um, method and so on. You really should check out his talk. I guess there was, it was recorded. It is really worth it. Um, providing professional equipment, I mean, what we talked about, getting that stuff to be actually able to do it. Or, if you can do it with smartphones, even better. Depends on what you want to do, obviously. Um, collaborative editing. This is now talking about the 90 hours of footage uh, sitting on my USB drives, not being edited and uploaded because my time is limited, right? Um, what I think about when I talk about collaborative editing, I think about distributing the, the extensive editing work to more people, to more shoulders, maybe even to people having a different background because someone might be good in the in like running the cables and setting up the, 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 the video environment but might not have the, the, the skills to do a good editing of a video project, right? And sharing the raw material, obviously. I do this now by sending USB disks via mail. Uh, I mean snail mail. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and copying data, and it's, it's, it's hard. And I lost some data like Oh, now both directories look exactly the same, then I can delete that stuff here because I don't need it there. Oh my god, this was the explorer window of two times exactly the same location, now I've deleted it. <laughs> Things like that happening. And, um, and then converting and uploading to comments. Converting? I don't think converting is a problem for me at least, but I know very well how to use FFmpeg and mencoder and so on. <laughs> and, but many people tell me like, WebM? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I found the Firefox plugin that the uh, video page recommends using. That's, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, that's how I converted all my videos to OVGs. And but how about iPhone? Is there any converter, free converter for iPhone? Uh, I don't know. I don't. As far as as far as I know, it's that there's a Firefox plugin called yeah. Firefox. 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 Yeah, yeah. Firefox. Firefox. That's excellent. And then Miro. Miro video yeah. converter. Yeah. That's what you said. That is free. free. Yeah. At least. I, I, mean, I believe it's free. Free. Yeah. Miro is free. Yeah. Miro is free. I believe it's open source, and yeah. they convert uh, to all kinds of different formats. Miro. I actually, oh, yeah. I actually use Miro. Yeah. When I if I have to download something in OGV and then edit in like H two six four or something, some it's pretty fast actually. It, it's, yeah, it's pretty fast, and they updated it like six months ago, so you can put a bunch of videos in it in a queue to convert. Yeah. So um, and uploading is a problem. I mean, I, I 
I normally put stuff on my FTP, add a text file with the actual wiki page content, I mean like the template and the metadata and that stuff, and then I send an email to somebody like Rowan, hey, please, can you move this to comments for me? And then it takes a few days and we will do it. Now I learned that there is, uh, you can do this with a bunch of yeah, but well, well, no, actually, you should be, should be able to do a lot of what you need to do with Trapped Upload now. Uh, up to 500 megs. That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, okay, so even bigger, yeah. If you talk about HD, at least, mm -hmm. it's... Sure. Okay. Not always. Sometimes, mm -hmm. yes. Right. Um, so, my proposal is a video project. And I'm really talking like a Wikimedia project. Like, I don't know if uh, wikivideo.org would be the right name and address for it, or, but something like this. Because I want to bring together these people out of the niches working somewhere in Wikipedia where nobody finds them to a central project where they can work together on a video project. So the wiki pages will be used to plan wiki pro uh, uh, wiki video projects. Like, we are going to the State Department and talk to this guy. Okay, there is a group of people discussing what questions to be asked. There is a, a, maybe somebody putting together, okay, the list of equipment we need and so things like that. So we can do this on a wiki page where it's, yeah, and can bring in more the people together to join forces. Well, one thing that I sort of started doing on my own is, and can I think easily be done, you know, without too much, you know, need to, for editing skill. The very first video I took, I, you know, you know, at least you know, as far as working in Seth, the very first video I took was on the way back from driving home from Wikimania last year. I live within about, you know, about 300 kilometers driving distance from Washington, so on the way home, my son was playing with his camcorder in the, in the seat next to me, and as we were driving through a tunnel north, the McHenry Tunnel north of Baltimore, he was holding it and said, I'm going, why don't you take, I wrote, we can take a video of the tunnel and put it in the article. So we did. So I've been interested in the idea of first, at least, of taking videos of particular roads that we have articles on. I mean, not in some in really, in the case of really short roads, the whole road, if you look at New York State Route 747, that was the first attempt to deliberately do this that I did, if only two that I've been able to upload so far. And uh, later, I'm, later in the summer, I'm hoping to upload a sort of montage of a longer road. So things like that, little, you know, sets like, uh, you know, like, you know, like roads or other views from a, uh, you know, transport, you know, transportation routes. That's something to start with if you're creating a set because you can use a pure cinema approach. You don't need uh, you don't need a voiceover and you don't need text. I done this for I mean I haven't finished it, I but I I've started doing this in Switzerland with railroads. Because I was invited to a one-day railroad trip, uh, ride some fancy railroads, and then on the morning, right when I wanted to go to leave my home, I saw this bag with this expensive camera from Wikimedia Germany. I felt like, why don't I take it with me? So <laughs> this was really a, like a very spontaneous thing. My but wife, still, yeah. I have like two and a half hours of footage now. Yeah. My wife and I had decided not to bring our camcorder on this trip. Had we, I might have gone on, on the Shanghai Maglev and taken video you know, video from that. I didn't bring it here uh -huh. because I felt like, first of all, it's a lot of extra luggage. <laughs> I have to kick her. But, uh, well, the Czech, I mean, thanks to our support, uh, I guess the Czech would have said, oh, it's great that you brought the stuff and takes, took some videos. We will take care of the costs. But Anyway, knowing that I have already like these 90 hours of footage, I feel like there is no chance in doing it. I mean, it just doesn't make sense doing it, unfortunately. So, video projects I know of internationally is uh, the WikiTV in German Wikipedia, I've talked about so much. Uh, the national parks I have mentioned. In Sweden, they did this with the Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize or Nobel Award winners, right? These interviews. Very interesting videos, but they also um, have the problem of yeah getting everything done and uploaded, and then the the English Wikipedia Wikimedia project. All right. Um, so, okay. On the one hand, we need this planning facilities like this wiki, and uh, where we also can add so what equipment is actually available, so people know that when they are in, in Germany or 
somewhere in Europe, know, okay, in Germany there are two cameras and a mixer and this and this and that. And when I go to Sweden, I know that the Swedish chapter has whatever else and so on. And then we can do the, the, the planning, can communicate together, um, build a community. Um, production is obviously outside any technical infrastructure. <laughs> it's outside, literally. Uh, stage three, editing. I have an idea of setting up a server where we upload our raw material right after we shot it in the original format. On this, uh, the server will produce automatically, uh, like it's called proxy clips on Kettlelight. I guess also on other editing software tools. It's like, as an analogy to photography, it's like making thumbnails. So it, conver it down converts the video to smaller video, but with the sim simpler specification. So you can later download it, work on it on Captain Live, and then and Captain Live will only say, okay, this is the video named Fubar, or are these free video um, timelines you had, you have done all the stuff, all your effects and everything. And Candlelight will just save uh, like a text file where all the operations are in. And then you upload this Candlelight file to the server again. And in, it is already done in Candlelight. The, the user interface and the actual renderer are two different projects. So can, let me get this, uh, the uh, edit decision list is on his live. That, that's an EEL, an edit okay. decision list. So it's basically all the time codes. This is where you cut, this is where you cut. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. a text file, essentially. That's what the Kevin Lab file is, right? OK, yeah. and so that it produces that. I've, I've spoken with uh, people at the foundation. I think, I've, Rob, I might have spoken with you about this, was uh, the process of, at, it's a legal question of uploading, if you were to upload proprietary formats, like MP4, H.264, things like that, and then if they were to be converted on Wikimedia servers. Uh, mm -hmm. it, like, that's a, that's a question that would mean that Wikimedia, the Wikimedia Foundation would have to actually buy a license for those formats to be able to do it. So it's a, it's a legal department question. I just wanted to fill that in. Okay. But it's, it's, a good, it's a great idea because that, those are what are normal formats. At, at least so far, I was always able to just use FFmpeg or M, M, M encoder mm -hmm. and drop in the stuff and get out a free format. So, yeah, I mean, I never got a proprietary codec or anything. So, you know, you had a proprietary oh. codec. It's H.264 is a proprietary codec, and and the implementate the implementation can be still open source. It's a GPL implementation, but. Um, in, at least in the United States, there are software patents okay. that um, that there are patent holders who purport to have the um, exclusive rights to distribute encoders um, and the terms that they encoders and decoders and the terms that they um, impose on those are decidedly not open source. I see. I see. Yeah. There's those who purport another way of saying trolls. Um, I will not. Speak to <laughs> the validity of the patents. <laughs> yeah, but you get the idea. We upload the raw material. We get these yeah. proxy clips. Everyone can easily download to to just do the editing. Then we upload the and the edit decision list list yeah. or kettle live file to the server. The server will then render the actual video and move it to comments. Yeah, 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 I know. Time is up. Unfortunately. Also wanted to talk a bit about subtitles, but anyway, uh, time is up. I think that our video guidelines have said that not to use subtitles, at least because we, you know, I guess at least the raw video should not use subtitles. No, no, no. Comments can do that oh, for you yes. as text. Oh. And we'll just. Show yeah, it. you mean there's an editable text layer you can put in? Uh, yeah, like, I wanted to get a oh, good because I was thinking that. But, but, I'm sorry, before everyone leaves, uh, so because of this idea where uh, the foundation servers can't necessarily, because of legal issues, take formats that are proprietary and convert them into free formats automatically, 
what would people think if there was a video uploader on the Commons app, the Commons uploading app? Would people like, would, if, if you could just record a video on here, press convert, would so, people like that? By the way, we, we also can't distribute that. So <laughs> that's not, that also can't happen. I was just about to ask you, so what does it change? Because yeah. it's still the same process yeah. being done just on a different computer. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be much more better if uh, subtitle functions is at is up. Subtitle? Subtitles? Yeah, it's for the uh, for you to add or add this on subtitles. Is that what we were just talking about? No, they exist. Subtitle the subtitle yeah. uh, uh, function exists. Yeah. yeah, there is a is a namespace called the timed yeah. text. Yeah. And you do timed text colon yeah. name of the video file yeah. dot language code. Yeah. Dot this is SRT. SRT is a subtitle format. Oh. And there you just, sure. and it's a text format. Yeah. And there you can just drop in, it's like a wiki page, right? You drop it in, and if you open the video under that name, it will offer you to show the video, including subtitles. And, and the nice thing is that you just like copy that page, like from the uh, timed text colon foobar.ogv.en.srt to the same name .jp.srt and just translate to Japanese and you have added Japanese subtitles. So, oh, okay, so it's in Chinese, whatever. Wait, you can do this in the actual video, in the actual video syntax when you're adding the video. To the text. And, uh, no, this is, this you do yeah. on yeah. completely Let's 